to lay that you cannot use rice over well for curled yarns. Rice is a yarn that can be broken through the basic principle of yarn shedding. Do not sew cloth and yarn as you do shedding. This is called parabola. Do not attempt to sew a single crochet from yarn to yarn. Okay, rise over road is used for straight lines, not parabolas. Anything that's a quadratic, meaning a degree two, such as x squared, makes a, a curved parabola. So, when you're filling out this table, you have to be a little careful about the negatives. Maybe on the board here. So here, when I, I have negative 2 in the table, that means I'm doing um, y equals negative 2 squared, which means y equals 4, because negative times negative is a positive, right? Now, if you put negative 2 squared in your calculator, sometimes it comes out negative 4. So be careful about that. You have to use parentheses. So that means we have this point, negative 2, um, positive 4, in this, in this we're, Well, we're plugging these numbers in for x, right? So we're just squaring it. So when I plug in negative 1, it's negative 1 squared. Negative 1 times a negative 1 is a positive 1. And my point will be negative one one. It would be as well. No. Plugging in for x. This is our table. Zero, one, and two. Oh. We're putting them in for x. So we're getting a y value out. Did you finish the table yet? Did you finish it? No. Yeah. So keep doing it. Yeah, I'll leave the next two blank. Everybody that needs to find the next two points on their own. That's what you told me. And then you want to put a graph line. All right, I'll square one and get one. I'll square two and get four. All right, we'll plot these points. Oh yeah, math lives matter. Make a picture. MLM. What? See? That's always been known to be a picture. Man, you right? Yeah, I know. You right? You right? She's <laughs> me and you, bro. So you start up here, you move down through your points, and you curve back up. Yeah, I got that. That's it. Um, Six, this one? 
So, let's talk about Cold War and World Cup and that. I'm looking for the winner of the World Cup last year. Which is it? Zero, zero. Zero points is not the top right line. Is that one point? Why do you say zero? Zero. You said it. How many guys? Okay, what kind of guess is that? Can I ever tell you the most important point is the center of the parabola? No, not every parabola is centered every time. But when you hear a little bit of it, you're like, what are all those lines? Why are they here? Um, where are they centered when you follow the parabola? Um, I'm going to talk about domain and range now. No. Yeah, Jake, you're right. All right, no. domain is a set of x values that, that are true for um for this like function. So this line, even though we only go up this side, goes goes up and up and up. So eventually, it's gonna go out so far it'll be where x is negative five and then x is negative ten. It'll go out to x is negative one hundred. And then it'll go positive all the way out too. So the domain is all real numbers. Thomas, what do you think about the range, the y value? Do you think that <laughs> do you think that this pink you think is gonna hit every y value ever? It's gonna hit every x value I ever said ever. Is it going to hit every y value? Ever? No, not at all. Um, the answer is no. Who thinks it's no and why? Because it's going out. Say what? It's going out the door. Yeah, you guys, it's never going to turn around. Yeah. It's it's never going to go below here. So the range of a parabola is always limited. We're going to say for this one that the y values are just zero and higher. And we say that with an inequality symbol. Write this down, right? Domain and range. So for our, our range, it just starts at zero and goes up. Whereas on the x-axis, every x, every x will be hit, but on the y-axis, it's not going to go down here to where y is negative. So one more thing I want you to write, and then we'll move on, is that this is called um, the parent quadratic function. Forever? Um, so this is the thing. So if you look at this parabola and put that for x and y, that's a pretty significant difference. It's not like you're going to have two or three different x and y to get out of the way. Every linear function does get out of the way at some point. It's just a matter of how much it does. And then you're going to have that in the Okay, I'm going to give you a blue handout, and I want you to keep the blue handout forever. You can write on it forever. You can write on it, and it's all about graphing. Yeah, I can fix it. Yeah. I usually write on the slide. The slide. Yeah. Okay. Nah, it was on my high school like, varsity. Yeah.
I saved it. <laughs> They're making fun of me because I saved it. That's a question. And that's what I'm going to say. Guys, I'm getting a haircut today. You're on level 10. Let's go down to level 5. Happy birthday, Ava. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. I will send you out the classroom. No. Listen, level 10. Way too high. Patrick, way too high. Five, acceptable. Take three. That's where I like this classroom at. Thank you. This is my way. You take this way, guys, and then you'll get a treat at the end of class. Maybe you can get me to post it. Neither of you guys are pointing. None of you guys are pointing. Is it after the class? Oh my god. Alright, let's see what happens. Oh my god. Tony, are you doing it? I can do it better than you. I really do it the best. So we're gonna draw these quadratic functions in standard form. Um Notice we have A, B, and C. We talked about that. Have you drawn board? Have we talked about A, B, and C before? Yes, A, B, and C. Yes, yeah. we talked about um, factors. I said, you know, it's important to understand what A, B, and C are. Um, Let's look at this, the axis of symmetry. Have you guys ever heard the word axis in school before? I think in world history you might hear is access of evil a thing? I think it is. I think it's in one of the world wars. Okay. Anyway, the axis of symmetry is an invisible middle line. Cutting the parabola in half. Oh, let's say dividing. Shh, you guys stop talking. Dividing the, li dividing the parabola in two. Yes, this is yours. Take some notes on oh, it. Oh, you gotta take notes. Yeah. I'm gonna go. Listen, I'm gonna bring it down. Thank you. And then, um, of interest, also zero comma c is the white in, uh white intercept. You can't always um graph the white intercept. Sometimes it's like really high up, but if you can, you should. All right, on this example, um, there's a lot of directions. It says, determine the y-intercept, so that's one thing. The equation of the axis of symmetry, that's another thing. The vertex is a third thing. Domain and range is a fourth thing. And we have to graph using a table is a fifth thing. So there's a lot involved in making these graphs. This is going to make like slope seem really basic. So these little bullet points here are steps to getting those things done. So the first thing we'll do is identify A, B, and C. Thinking of um, Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. A is 1, B is 2, and C is 3. Um, based on the yellow information here about the y-intercept, does anybody feel like they can identify what the y-intercept is? Yeah. Three. So go ahead and plot it. We have our first point, zero comma three. Plot your point. Plot a point. We had a point at zero three. The axis is symmetry, um, the invisible line that goes through the center. So here the axis is symmetry, the y-axis is continuity, and here the axis of symmetry can be found using this equation, negative b over 2a. So it's x equals negative 2 over 2 times 1. 
just plugging in B and A. So I put two in for B and one for A. So that's negative two over two, which is negative one, right? So our axis of symmetry is X equals negative one. Yes. Um, it has to do with um, this and it's x plus five and x plus five. The middle is this double. This has a lot to do with that. Okay. Um, and you know when you find the middle of something, like if something was eight units long, how would you divide it? Or how would you find the middle? You would divide it by two, right? So um, we're dividing by two to find the middle of kind of the width of the parabola, okay? Um, and have you heard of the quadratic formula? Um, it's you'll also start to understand this when you do the quadratic formula but it's a little complicated but the more you get into math the more you'll see it all right so we need a dashed line here dash a line the dash line is actually really really helpful it helps you see where the center of your parabola is so the vertex is going to be somewhere on this dashed line the what? The what? The vertex, the center. Like I, I introduced this word vertex here. The center of this parabola will be somewhere on this dashed line. So in order to find the center, we're going to plug in the negative b over 2a answer into the function. So for this one, we're going to Plug in x equals negative 1 to the original equation. Push, push, you hate this. So it's y equals negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 3. Well, I want you to calculate that. You said will. Write it down first. Get it on your paper. It's important. We're going to spend three days plugging numbers in to quadratic equations. So this, we're going to do it a lot. So get comfortable with the order of operations. Feel free to use a calculator. For um, moving on into higher math for the SAT and college placement, and it is a college prep course. It's mostly for students who are going to go into a math or science career. So it's, it's fine. It's fine if you want. Oh, she's eating happy white bread too. Do you think it's a way to find the line? It's a waste of time to learn it. I showed it to this the phone. I can't save it because then they'll make fun of me, so I can't save it. I agree with Will, it is too. So this means our vertex. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is going to be somewhere on this dashed line. Right <laughs> Lauren, go ahead and fly your vertex. Did you also get two out? <laughs> Stop. Did you also get two out? Did you plug in negative one and get two? Okay, you're behind. You're behind. Get with it. So here's our vertex. It fell right on this dash line. So now I can see the center of the parabola. 
So the last thing we have to do is to make this table of, of values. You put your vertex in the middle. This establishes what other x values you're going to use in the table. I need two points to the left and two points to the right. So it's going to be negative 2, negative 3, 0, and 1. Your table is different every time. It's based on your vertex. So now we have to plug these points into the original equation, just like we did with negative 1, and um, simplify all of them. So this would be, you could kind of extend this table out. This would be negative 3 squared plus 2 times negative 3 plus 3. And the next one would be negative 2 squared plus 2 times negative 2 plus 3. 0 squared plus 2 times 0 plus 3. 1 squared plus 2 times 1 plus 3. So you end up plugging into the equation five times to get a really nice, really nice five point graph like we have here. Yeah, we only have two more things to learn. No, we have to do study guys for the rest of the time. This is going to make We're going to review guys. for like four weeks for your exam. Yes. No? Most likely. I don't think anybody in here will fail. I failed it last year. Really? Yeah, let me just go. Moving on, moving on. All right, Um, right, let's see. Um, Patrick and Kalia, you guys plug negative 3 in and tell me what you get. Sophia, Brianna, Cadence, and Libby, you guys plug in negative 2. Um, everybody in this row plug in 1. And then you guys can all plug in. If you're with it, do them all. Do them all if you're with it. Zero is going to be three. <sighs> because the negative time thing is positive. So people will people will spend their entire life in high school doing that wrong. So just learn it today. I'm glad you made that mistake right now. Some people can, some people can't. That's really what we're doing here. We're just like judging you based on your skills. We're just giving you a number to say how great you are. Number. Learn what? No. Did you guys try plugging a number in and did you get your number right? Let's see a thumbs up if you got the same number I did. Okay. Good job. Let's plot these points. Plot your points and make your nice U-shaped graph. Right here. No. On, that, on that graph above. All of this work has been all in the same equation. It takes this much work to graph one beautiful parabola.
like modeled lots of things. We've talked about bridges. We've talked about anything falling from a cliff is a parabola shape. The way gravity and air force makes things fall models a parabola. Okay. Um, lots of projectiles model parabolas. Have you guys seen the movie Hidden Figures? Hidden Figures is about the the four the four women who were in NASA. They were black women in NASA. I think it was like in the fifties or sixties, and one of them was attributed to solving this like major problem for like a spaceship. It had to do with a parabola. If you watch the movie, it's about changing the equation of a parabola to a conic section, which is high school math that they're doing in NASA. Okay. Did you hear my point? Did you hear my point? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just saying that I see. What was the movie called again? Hidden figures. Yep, I know that the main the main character is uh the girl that played the mom of Jaden Smith in Karate Kid. Why not? You guys, you guys, if you cannot be quiet and start doing the math, I will give you a quiz tomorrow on this. Okay? When classes stop listening, I start doing pop quizzes. Okay? So you will walk in tomorrow and I'll give you a little piece of paper to graph. And I will do that until your grades get low enough until you start paying attention. So be quiet. Start doing your math. Okay, your domain is all real numbers. It will always be all real numbers. The range. Can anybody figure out what the range might be on this parabola? It is two. Yeah, with these fancy brackets. Patrick, how did you come up with two? Yes, it's the value of the vertex. Okay, so it took us that long to um, graph the parabola. And like half you guys didn't have the attention span to get through it. So focus. Flip your paper over and go through all those steps again. Does anybody want to take a picture? Does anybody want to take a picture of this? These are the things that you're going to go through every time you drop the parabola. Where is the legend? All side guys. <laughs> All right, let's go to the back. No one did the back. All right, you guys. I'm gonna mark how many comments you have that have nothing to do with your math. Once I get to ten, you guys have a pop quiz tomorrow. Okay. Oh. About this problem here. Yeah. The purpose that I encourage discussions and that you guys feel so comfortable conversating this room is because it's really good for learning. Okay? So try to focus on your verb. You got great verbal skills. Focus it on graphing the problem. Number two, what should we do first? Communicate that. Find ABC. Benjamin had it. Find ABC. A is probably 3x. Negative 3x. Um, B equals negative 12. C equals negative 8. Do the freaking here. Negative 8. Oh, okay. No, they are. You are. You guys are following each other. It's great. Yeah, we're talking about Tyler.
Mm -hmm. Two negatives make a positive. Same as always. All right, so our first step was to identify A, B, and C. Next, we find the axis of symmetry, which is a formula you have to remember. X equals negative B over 2A. I know, Tony, you definitely have a little quiz tomorrow. You, you guys just had 10 comments between the two of you about that water bottle. How many times we've talked about water this morning? He was thirsty. Who cares? Focus. We need water to survive. You have to you have to memorize this formula and then be able to execute it. Tyler is already like, well, wait a minute, there's too many negatives in this problem. Can you get to where Tyler is, please? Can we talk about I'm negatives? Sure, I wish I could be as smart as Tyler. You could if you just stop talking about water and plug in. It's just plugging in. Plug your numbers in. It's a lot of negatives. Take it step by step. A uh, negative b, negative negative twelve will become a positive twelve. That's two j. Two times negative three is negative six. Can you divide twelve by negative six? Yeah, yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. So our axis of symmetry is x equals negative two. What does that look like on the graph? No, it's negative two zero. No. None of that. Somebody else. What, what does X. the axis of symmetry look like on a graph? Axis is oh that was all the answers today. I Dash line at x equals negative two. No. So here's my y intercept, c equals negative eight, and now here goes my dash line. Dash line goes vertically. Yeah, we uh, went versus each other. Mm. Inequalities. Yeah. This is actually an invisible line. It's not like on the parabola. It just helps you see the center of the parabola. Okay. Um. Plug. I think we should all yeah. execute into. <laughs> that was a really good effort. <laughs> Next, we're going to get our negative two. We're going to plug it into the equation, and that's going to tell us where our point is on this dashed line. Do we have to make so this is some tricky math. Negative 3 times negative 2 squared minus 12 times negative 2 minus 8. We couldn't have any more negative signs. That's like the most possible on that equation. So you have to learn PEMDAS before you do this. Good thing you guys are really good at that. PEMDAS, parentheses, and exponents will go first. So... I'm going to do negative 2 squared, no. so that's negative, negative 3 times 4. I can also go ahead and do negative 12 times negative 2, and that's a positive 24 minus 8. So you know, you can put all of this in your calculator and hit enter, and it'll come out. You just got to be careful about the parentheses. Benjamin says it's four. Uh, mm -hmm. Great job. We got our vertex. Negative two comma four. Way up here. 
Yeah. Now we gotta make a table. It's a great comment. Comment for progress. Comment for progress. What is in the back? Are you good? You guys good back there? Okay. Lauren or Bella or Kanaya? I'm wondering if you guys can figure out the correct table. Like, how do I know what X values to put in my table? This is one of the hardest things to figure out. This is so much math. I can't even do this on my paper rows without interacting with this. I'll open it to the room. Does anybody know how to start the table? Kids? Yes. You got it. You got it. You just need to flip it. What should be in the center of the table? The vertex is in the center because it's the center of the graph. So put it in the center of the table. I'm going to put a negative 2 for it. I already know that point. I did all the math for it. The vertex goes in the middle. And you need two points to the left and two points to the right. This is the part that students usually cannot learn on the first day. We have so much information. They're going to come up tomorrow and be like, why do you want me to change that? Maybe negative 3, 5. Negative three, negative four, negative one, and zero. So the table's different every time, and these are the points that we're going to plug in. So Logan and Alicia um, and Alyssa, you guys plug in negative four. Mikhail and Thomas and Alia, you guys plug in negative three. Y'all two groups back there, you guys plug in negative one. I'll do zero. The rest of you guys do negative four. The I know. Let's put it up. What? Focus on your comments, people, and make sure you're you're doing math. Anybody have chapstick? No, it's um. You're single-handedly responsible for half of these comments. The <laughs> Chapstick. What kind of like defense mechanism you get when you don't want to do things? <laughs> oh wait, so um, some of your peers are are with you. Thomas, you got a number yet? Okay. All right. I'll wait. I'll wait. If you're done, try other numbers. Logan, you have a number yet? You do? For which one? Negative four? Okay. What'd you get for negative four? Check it I agree. Good job. I agree. Check out your math for negative four. What? No, negative four right there. Come on. created this slide. It's just input and an output. I know I I can't fit it either. All right, let's try the next one. One, I agree. Negative three, one. Great job.
Now, the law of symmetry would say that these two points are going to be the same as these two. So you can kind of check your math. If it's looking like your parabola is not symmetrical and you've made an error. The skinnier they are, the more difficult it is. Um, this one is opening down. And the one we did in bell work in the first page, they both had arrows going up. Why is this one going down? The negative in front makes the parabola point downward. So you can make predictions about how the parabola is going to look just from knowing is the leading coefficient positive or negative. All right, y'all. So your homework is to do number three. And four. You don't have to do four. You can just do number three. Guys, we're going to be doing this for three days, four days, doing This is like your last test. It's going to be on this. Okay, so don't sleep on it today because that won't go away. We're going to keep doing it. We're going to cover this out. 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 We're going to cover this out